KY3 News starts now. We will lower taxes for middle-income Americans so they can keep more of their hard-earned paychecks. President Trump makes a stop in Springfield today to talk taxes. Hi there, I'm Ethan Forhess. We'll have live team coverage tonight highlighting his speech, what local businesses think of his plan for tax reform, and the people who were there to witness the historic event, beginning tonight with Emily Wood outside the Lauren Cook Company in Springfield. Yeah, Ethan, President Trump fired up the crowd here in a big way, hitting many of the talking points that he's had since his campaign, including tax reform and including his desire to keep jobs here in America. An exciting day for the community and for everyone involved, but especially for the Cook family, never dreaming the business they built would be on display for the entire world to see. We're also glad to be back in the heartland with the very, very fine folks of Missouri. It was just days ago the whirlwind began for the city of Springfield, a presidential visit during which Donald Trump would lay out his plan for a new tax code and economic growth. At the center of it all, the Cook family. It's very humbling. I mean, that's what it is. Lauren Cook II, his wife Elaine, and the other Cook siblings couldn't have dreamed the president himself would come visit the business their family built right here in Springfield, a company they say is committed to our community and to keeping jobs in America. Uh, president Trump uh, thinks just like my father has always thought keep jobs in America. We have two major competitors that we deal with on a daily basis and they have plants in China, India and Mexico and we've always been pretty stubborn and we want to keep those jobs here in America. But I have seen the resilience of the American spirit. The message of making America great again resonating with the people of the Ozarks gathered at the Lauren Cook facilities today. He's everything I was hoping he'd be and he's more. I, I just love him. The president vowing to make it easier for businesses to keep jobs here and support their commitment to our local communities. We must reduce the tax rate on American businesses so they keep jobs in America, create jobs in America, and compete for workers right here in America, the America we love. And back here live inside the Lauren Cook facility, you can get a look at uh, how the work is continuing tonight. The teardown is happening now. Uh, so much work just to make this event happen, and it happened so fast. It came together in just a matter of days. A bit of info I picked up from the Cook family. They tell me they provide free health insurance for all their employees and their families. So another policy information that they're looking for on the national stage is going to be the health care reform debate. They're watching that very closely from here in Springfield as well. Reporting live in Springfield, Emily Wood, KY3 News. All right, thanks, Emily. Sarah Forehead was also there for the president's speech today and has more tonight on how local small business owners are reacting to the president's call to reform the tax system. Yeah, Ethan, several small business owners in the crowd. Of course, Lauren Cook, as Emily mentioned, the biggest one, really 600 employees. We talked to a guy who has 12 employees, and he really echoed that, saying, yes, we've got to reduce that crushing tax burden in order to produce only in America and not here and elsewhere. And in the president's words, to make America great again. The tax code is so complicated that more than 90% of Americans need professional help to do their own taxes. This enormous complexity is very unfair. It disadvantages ordinary Americans who don't have an army of accountants. Complicated and crushing, President Trump kicking off the start of rewriting the tax code. Springfield business owners say relieving the tax burden will mean help for the bottom line. For Sean Duggins, it's about selling homes. He's president of Carol Jones Realtors. And as far as changing the tax code and not having to have the, the uh, army of accountants to, uh, to do the taxes, make it simpler, just easier to get through the red tape and keeping more dollars with the small businesses so they can spend more and invest more in America. BWI Sanitation echoed that sentiment. The comments that the president made uh, is, is music to our ears. As a business owner, not, not necessarily dr directly to us, but as other companies are able to get some relief from, from taxation, they will grow and then in return, that will help us grow as well. Owner Darren Campbell has 12 employees. He says with higher taxes, businesses first cut event hosting like this, company parties, etc., which flushes his profits down the drain. When that tax burden is relieved, that money is going to be spent. We cannot restore our wealth if we continue to put our businesses at such a tremendous 
disadvantage. We must reduce the tax rate on American businesses so they keep jobs in America, create jobs in America, and compete for workers right here in America, the America we love. And so, Ethan, what does that mean for the average Joe? If you're not a business owner, the president says that under his new simple plan that he laid out today, he's going to take it back to 1935 when the tax code was two pages long and most Americans, most all of them, just did it themselves, never had to hire an accountant. Right now, it is 100 pages long. He wants to go back to the way it used to be. Ethan? Change that would be. We'll see if he can get it done. Sarah Forehead's live tonight in Springfield. Of course, it's a big day for Springfield, and a lot of people just wanted to be part of it somehow. So hundreds of supporters of the president decided to spend several hours outside to take a shot at seeing him and let him know they're with him. Ashley Reynolds continues our team coverage tonight. The loud screaming is not where most people stand. Supported Mr. Trump after Mike Huckabee lost. They wore their hats and brought their signs and flags, all to show their backing of President Trump and conservative ideals. Missouri does support him, that there are people in mass that have voted for him, that the elections are true. Very important that his agenda be enacted, and it's in trouble right now. Supporters say they were honored. The president would come to the Show Me State to kick off his tax overhaul plan. And we're hopeful it's going to pass. I work for a small business, so small business tax relief would be helpful. Middle income families, which is what my family is, would be very helpful. The corporate tax rate is an issue Republicans and Democrats can come together work on and help this country get over the hate that we're experiencing right now. Hustle, hustle, man. People who do not support President Trump and his policies organized their demonstration a few blocks south. I think it's wonderful, yes. I mean, no one that I've talked to today wants any violence. This was the plan. Both groups met and came to this agreement. Folks we talked to say it was a good idea to keep demonstrators on both sides in zones because it kept the peace. As we're all here to use our First Amendment right. I've had a couple of people that were kind of hateful, but outside of that, we're all Americans and we're here to voice our opinion. Amen. Go America! In Springfield. Go America. Amen. I'm Ashley Reynolds. There are no problems to report uh, between both sides there. We can also tell you those hundreds of people were lined up saying they don't agree with the president and his policies. It was an organized group calling itself the People's Protest. We'll have a lot more of their story coming up for you tonight at 6. Then there were the people who just wanted to witness uh, the visit from a sitting president recognizing its historical significance. Katie Brousseau, talk to those folks. Many people gathered here along Kearney Street today call this event today history in the making. Many folks here, as you can see, are supporters of President Trump. They say they wanted to show up today to let the president know that they stand beside him. However, others tell me they're just out here to be a part of history. They say they may not get another chance to see our nation's top leader. So while he was here, they wanted to catch a glimpse of either him or his motorcade as it passed by. Many people we talked with of all ages say they feel like they're making history today. Just an opportunity to see a sitting president for the first time in my life. Yeah, it's going to be something I remember forever because um, I get to learn and see history happen. No, it's a piece of history that I will cherish. It is monumental to our country. Our president is the one that leads our country and takes our country to where it's going to be or not going to be. So much fun just to come out, see Trump, wave little posters. So as you heard, there's a lot of excitement here in the Queen City today. One couple was actually celebrating their anniversary today, so they said it was a special occasion to see the president. Reporting in Springfield, I'm Katie Brousseau. Of course, many elected officials from all across the Ozarks, really all across the state of Missouri, came to see President Trump today in Springfield. Linda Russell has some reaction from some of them, including Representative Jason Smith, who's worked on tax issues in Washington as a member of the Ways and Means Committee. Missouri representatives from both the state and federal level were in attendance at President Trump's speech today here at Lauren Cook, and those we spoke with afterwards were very pleased with his ideas for tax reform. So I think that what the president outlined today was a comprehensive tax reform plan that can be more jobs and higher pay. Anytime historically we've done that, whether it was JFK or Ronald Reagan, we've seen an economy that's expanded 
uh, more jobs, higher wages. So uh, I'm happy that finally in D.C. they're talking about it because in Missouri over the last couple of years we have taken steps to lower taxes. The tax code is 55 times the size of the King James Version of the Bible. It's over 70,000 pages. It's changed over 6,000 times since 2001. That's more than one change a day. It's filled with all kinds of special interests, loopholes that help benefit the wealthy. We need to simplify it that normal Americans can fill out their taxes on one simple, pe one simple piece of paper. Of course, Congressman Smith will be pushing for Trump's ideas in Congress. He just hopes his colleagues on both sides of the aisle will all work together for positive tax reform. Reporting in Springfield, I'm Linda Russell. And along those lines, for her part, we can tell you Democratic Missouri Senator Claire McCaskill says she's optimistic that she and President Trump will find common ground when it comes to tax reform and says she looks forward to working with the president to make bipartisan tax reform a reality. Much more coverage of President Trump's visit coming up here at 6 o'clock and also, of course, at KY3.com. Now to the other news of the day across the Ozarks, vandalism at the National Cemetery located at Glenstone and Seminole in Springfield. Someone threw paint on the only Confederate statue on the property. Crews spent the morning, as you see there, cleaning it up. The vandals were not caught. A guilty verdict for a man charged in a double murder in Springfield. This man, Willie Clark, has been convicted of two counts of murder in the shooting deaths of his ex-girlfriend and one of her adult sons in February of 2015. He represented himself during trial. Another of the victim's adult sons was shot three times but survived and testified against Clark. Clark will be back in court to be sentenced in November. Meanwhile, the sentencing of a Missouri Highway Patrol trooper has been delayed. Brandon Ellingson drowned while handcuffed after Trooper Anthony Piercy pulled him over on the Lake of the Ozarks back in 2014. You may recall that. Ellingson was thrown from the trooper's boat, but the trooper had not properly secured a life jacket on Ellingson, who was handcuffed at the time. The judge rescheduled to allow Ellingson's father to speak at sentencing. Piercy avoided an involuntary manslaughter trial by pleading guilty in June to a misdemeanor boating violation. Sentencing for him is now set for September 19. And there's a continuance in the case of a Springfield man accused of murdering a young girl. Craig Wood is charged with the kidnapping, rape, and murder of 10-year-old Haley Owens. Wood was scheduled to appear in court this morning, but will instead go before a judge on September 15th. Prosecutors are seeking the death penalty in this case. His attorneys and Haley's mother, though, are asking for the death sentence to be taken off the table. Tropical Storm Harvey bringing more water. Next at 5, the new round of rain pushing into Texas and Louisiana. Plus, the help MU is offering to students impacted by Harvey. Stick around. Harvey is still unleashing its fury on Texas and now Louisiana. The tropical storm making a third landfall and bringing with it a lot more water. Tens of thousands have already evacuated. Now thousands more are being forced to higher ground. The latest hit from Harvey, overwhelming. 26 inches of rain in just 24 hours. The city of Beaumont, unrecognizable, dotted by only rooftops for miles. Everything else swallowed by the rising flood waters. So the operation right now is very clear. We're still in life-saving, uh, life-sustaining mode. As the water rushed in, so did first responders. Navy teams pulling soaked and scared survivors to safety. As others scrambled to escape, we now know a young mother lost her life, swept away while trying to save her child. Apparently the infant was clinging to her uh, in the water. They weren't able to resuscitate her. The baby, we're told, however, was alert and uh, conscious. While the rain has stopped in Houston, the search and rescue mission is not. 24,000 National Guard troops have been deployed, with the water still rising in neighborhoods across the city. All night, just kept coming in, kept coming in higher and higher. Officials say more than 25,000 have been moved to higher ground, a number that continues to grow here. It's just devastating, but you just grab what you, you grab your kids, you grab your pets, and you just go, you leave everything. Some have lost everything. A dive team today located the Salvador family, a couple and their great-grandchildren, killed when their van was pulled under the floodwater. The realization for so many here is so difficult isolated by the water and unsure of what's next. Jay Gray, NBC News, Houston.
The scenes just don't get any better, do they? Not yet, at least. The University of Missouri is offering to house students' family members who have been displaced by Hurricane Harvey. Residence halls have room because of a large drop in freshman enrollment there on campus. And seven of the halls are now closed to save money. Now those rooms are being offered to Harvey evacuees. And a reminder, we're teaming up with the Red Cross for Hurricane Harvey relief. We will be collecting donations tomorrow from 4 to 6.30. And the number to call. 417-268-3222. We can tell you all of the money we raise will go to flood relief and recovery down in Texas and Louisiana. And that's again tomorrow from 4 to 6.30. Back here in the Ozarks, ah, what do we have? Another perfect day. Beautiful outside. Abby's the next with how long we can look forward to this weather and what the Labor Day holiday weekend looks like. Next. And now, your KY3 Storm Team forecast. Welcome back, everybody. It is 520. Here's the picture up in Lebanon. We have some high cloud cover, also some cumulus clouds on the horizon. It wasn't enough, though, to get rid of our sunshine today, and high temperatures still managed to make it into the low 80s in most spots. As you head home this evening, temperatures are now falling to the 70s at 79 here in Springfield. We have a north wind at 12 miles an hour and dew point numbers that are down in the lower 60s. Temperatures elsewhere in the 70s and 80s for the most part. It's still 81 down in Mountain Home, holding on to the 80s over in Lamar, too, at 80 degrees and 82, the current temperature this evening in Rolla. So we look at the evening and the overnight hours. Once again, a perfect night to head outdoors. Temperatures will be falling into the 70s here shortly. It's going to be beautiful weather overnight tonight. Once again, I have numbers that fall back down into the low and mid 60s. Mainly a clear sky expected overnight tonight after a high temperature of 83. I think we fall back into the lower 80s as we head into uh, the next couple of days. Temperatures are going to hold pretty steady and they're going to be rain free for the next couple of afternoons too. If you're thinking about washing the car, I say go for it. We're in for this really nice stretch of weather. Some dry time coming our way in the seven-day forecast. Initially this week, it was looking like we could get some rain from Hurricane Harvey. Now Tropical Storm Harvey. Just cloud cover is what I expect for most places. In fact, many of you, the high cloud cover today was from that storm system way to our southeast. So here's a look at what to expect as we approach the Labor Day holiday weekend. A lot of folks see this as the end of summer and want to plan some outdoor activities, head to the lake, and things are shaping up to be quite nice. So here's what to expect. On Saturday, Saturday, it's going to be sunny. I have high temperatures that are in the low 80s. We warm a little bit on Sunday, about 83 degrees, 84 on Sunday afternoon. As we get closer to Monday, though, the Labor Day holiday itself, temperatures will probably be the warmest and we'll have highs that approach 90 degrees in some spots. So nice summer-like weather to enjoy the pools, enjoy uh, the lake time before it gets a little bit cool and we head closer to fall. Tonight, 60 in Springfield, 65 in Harrison, a little bit warmer down there with some additional cloud cover. Tomorrow, temperatures are in the 80s. Once again, more clouds the further south you travel. And here's the seven-day forecast. Now, numbers are going to be back into the lower 80s each day this weekend. Notice the warming trend here, though, Sunday and Monday. That's nice for Labor Day weekend. Just in time, a lot of folks are going to be spending some time outdoors. Yeah, right. Cold front comes through at the end of the seven-day forecast. And beyond that, some of the models are hinting at a huge cool down. Oh, no. I mean, we're talking about a really a, a chilly shot of air. So the cold front comes through Monday, Tuesday time frame. We get some rain out of that. I have some models that are predicting we go into the 40s, 40s. at some point next week. Yeah. Oh, it's going to feel cold to us. You may uh, have to start bringing the light jackets yeah. back out, start thinking about some of that. So September will likely start off on a cool note for us. I'm not at all prepared for the 40s. You can enjoy Labor Day weekend first and yeah. be near 90. The warm-up is going to be right on time, right? It will, yeah. Great day in the lake. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, next, a construction crew breaking ground on a new building gets a surprise. Did you see this? Next at 5, we'll tell you where workers found a rare dinosaur skull. Boy, did you hear about this? This is something. Construction workers in the Denver area stumbled upon a Triceratops skull as they were digging and prepping the site for the city's new public safety facility, which now won't be built anytime soon, as you know. Uh, triceratops were three-horned, plant-eating dinosaurs. Researchers have since also dug up a horn and a shoulder blade. Once collected, the fossils will be housed at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. Something, huh? All right, stick around. We're back after this. All right, well, what we got going on tonight? It's been a beautiful day, right? Beautiful day, beautiful evening. This is just a perfect stretch of weather that yeah, we've had nice. for outdoor activities. So if you're heading out tonight, this evening, temperatures will really be very comfortable, perfect to get the grass cut. We have dry weather. Fall into the 60s again tonight, so once again, one of those cool nights. Yeah. It'll feel good in the morning. And then tomorrow, we're going to heat things back up. We'll be back into the low 80s.
It has been a great stretch. It has. Early, but great. Uh -huh. That'll do it for us. Thanks for watching tonight at 5. We'll see you again at 6.